Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm getting ready for a trip. So I thought I'd check over the bike. A couple of things I want to check on. This is going to be a follow-up of, if you remember this video, essential mods and tips for beginners. So if you know what you're doing with a DR650, then uh, I'll see you on the next video. I'm going to make this one real simple. So uh, first thing we'll do is we'll get into the airbox. Okay, so the stock DR650 on the left side here has a wee toolbox with some basic tools and a, and a wee bag. So you want to get into that and there's a JIS screwdriver that we'll use to take the side panels off. So let's get into that. So there's two JOS screwdrivers, it's the larger one of the two, and then there's two screws on each side for the side panels. I've just got this rag here for a grip. This video is going to be more of a hands-on compared to the last one, which was more about what the DR650 is about and its issues and things like that. But what we're going to do now is just check the air filter, and there's also one other filter we want to check, and that's for the carburetor, but I'll show you when we get in there. So side panel out. Okay, so here's the side door, four screws for the airbox. You want to swap out the large JOS screwdriver for the smaller one, because these are smaller screws. So get these loose, and then we can see how clean the filter is. And then we'll pop off the seat and then check the other filter. I'll show you where that is. All right, so I'll get taking these off and get back to you. As you can see, my filter's not that bad. I do a lot of on-road riding, so I don't get too much dust. I do the occasional off-road, but um, I'd call that good. There's still plenty of oil on it. So what we'll do now is we'll put the door back on this, we'll take the seat off, and we'll check the carburetor filter. And usually that gets dirtier faster, but we'll soon find out, so let's start doing that. Okay, so the airbox lid's back on. You want to look up here, you'll see a 12mm for the seat, one on each side, so crack them loose. And then you can pull the whole seat backwards, and then it will expose the top. So let's get cracking these loose. Okay, so the two 12mm are off, Let's slide it back, it's just a wee latch there that holds on the front. So that's that. So in terms of air filters, this is the second one for the carburetor. And as you can see, it's quite dirty. But what I've done is, I'll just grab some pliers. Okay, got some pliers. What I've done is, Actually, just cut a piece of foam and slotted it in there. And as you can see, it's kept the actual filter clean because I don't think you can, you have to replace this whole thing and you can't just pull out that foam. So I just put a wee pre filter in there. So we'll clean this up, put that back in, and that's the air side of things. And then we'll move on to the next thing. So we'll just chuck a bit of uh, kerosene in this cup. Let it soak for a little bit. And then we'll re-oil it and put it back in. You can just use normal 10W40 engine oil or whatever. It's not too important, I don't think. You, you might not even have to oil it. It definitely helps keep that carburetor filter clean, though. That's about as clean as it's going to get, but if you look there, it's quite surprising. It's quite a lot of uh, dirt that came out of it. Alright, so we'll dry this out, put some more oil back on it, and then we'll move on to some other maintenance things.
Okay, so I think the next thing we'll check is the tyre pressure. So solo riding, we're looking at 22 psi for the front, 25 psi for the rear. So we'll check that because we'll be doing a bit of uh, long distance. So we want to make sure the tyre pressure is good. So let's get a gauge and we'll check that. Okay, for the front. 15 psi. So I'm going to need more on the front. We'll check the rear. E 17-ish. So it's easier for me just to go to the garage and pump that up because I don't actually have the connection for my compressor. So um, I'll do that afterwards, but at least I know that I need to pump them up. So we've checked the two air filters. We've cleaned one of them, the other one was good. And we've checked the tyre pressure, which will be sorted out later. Now I thought we'll check the slack and the clutch. You want a wee bit of slack, but uh, by the looks of it, it's quite, it's probably a little bit too much there. So we'll adjust that, get a little bit of the slack out, and then we'll check some other things. So what we want to do is peel this back. A lot of guys will already know this, but just in case you don't. Then you want to loosen this lock nut here. And then we want to screw this out until we've just got a little bit of play. So you just keep playing with the clutch there. I would say I'm not pulling on the cable, that's just its own free play. I'm going to call that good there. Lock this lock nut back down, slide this back over, and that's the clutch done. Okay, so this might be an obvious one, but here's your oil level. I'm going to check if it's clean, check when you last changed it, and check the level. That's the bike straight there. It's just sitting just below the full mark, which is good. And this oil was changed about a thousand k's ago, so I'm going to call it good. So that's the oil done. I've also got a video of doing the oil change. If you're interested, I'll put that in the description. So as for the chain, you've got 30 to 45 millimeters of slack, or 1.2 to 1.8 inches of slack. So we'll check that. That's quite an important one. You don't want to have your chain too tight. And obviously you don't want it too loose. So with mine, it's probably starting to get on the loose side. But the problem is, if I adjust that one more, it kind of goes too tight. And once I'm on the bike, it tightens up a little bit too. So I'm going to call the chain good. We'll put it up on the stand real quick. And we'll just give it a bit of a chain loop. So I've got some of this stuff. I don't think it's the best, but it does the job. Um, ideally, you want to spray the lube on the inside of the chain because centrifugal force is going to pull it out anyway. So you're best putting it in the middle. You don't need too much. I would say that's enough. And we can call the chain done. It's also a good idea to check the play in your throttle that's pretty good but if it's too excessive or it's too tight then you want to pull this back same procedure as the clutch and you'll be good to go so it's a good idea to check your indicators and your brakes that's all good all right so you want to make sure that your brake pads are good on the front and rear give them a check Make sure there's no loose nuts and bolts. Just go over the whole bike. This is for a long trip, or even a short trip. Every now and then you should really check everything. Um, that's about it, guys. Nice and simple. A lot of you guys already know this stuff, but I'm sure there's a couple of people out there that might find it helpful. So uh, that'll be the end of the maintenance and tips kind of videos. Next video should be a little camping trip couple of days worth so thanks for watching guys and catch you on the next one cheers